Last week on LinkedIn Live, I was asked, what is the difference between a data engineer and a software engineer? I think this is a valid question, especially since we often focus more heavily on what is the difference between a data scientist and a data engineer. And I think overall, one could argue that technically, there are more similarities between a software engineer and a data engineer versus a data engineer and a data scientist. Now I can already see some of your fingers moving with your fingers quickly typing to write furious comments about, you know, maybe why data engineers are completely different than software engineers or why they're closer to data scientists or whatever you might feel. But one of the things that I feel is more difficult when it comes to defining the difference between data engineers and software engineers is that data engineers as well as software engineers have such a broad range of skills as well as job requirements depending on the company that they work. And this is what I think makes it very difficult to compare these two skills. In one role, a data engineer might be focusing a lot more on drag and drop tooling, as well as using things like uh, data visualization tools where they don't do a lot of coding at all. Whereas in another role, they might be doing a lot of object oriented programming, developing infrastructure, doing a lot of DevOps and cloud development, and really just doing a lot more stuff that lines up with a software engineer in general. With that in mind, I'm going to spend the next few minutes discussing some of the more tangible differences that I think I've noticed between data engineers and software engineers. And this is based off my personal experiences, and I'd love to hear your experiences on what you think kind of the differences between data engineers and software engineers are below in the comments. My goal being that if people in the future are looking to figure out whether they want to be a data engineer or a software engineer can kind of understand the differences, not just from my perspective, but also from yours, my viewers. All right, let's first start to focus on a data engineer that does a lot more programming in general. In many cases, I've seen these roles almost be defined as something like a software engineer or a software engineer with like some sort of data infrastructure focus. In these cases, generally speaking, these are arguably just software engineers who have a more keen focus on data and how they should structure data as they're often just developing a lot of backend infrastructure using a lot of infrastructure level coding where they're having to do a lot more than just code data pipelines. Instead, they're also having to develop a lot of the logging and monitoring systems that actually manage these data pipelines themselves. And I think that's one of the differentiations as far as like data engineers that are a little more leaning on the software side versus the purely data and data analytics side is they're often having to develop that infrastructure that not only manages the data pipelines, but maybe some of the stuff around it. And they really are often taking a lot of software principles and applying it to data infrastructure and even some of their core data layers. All right, before continuing this discussion, first off, thanks for everyone who subscribed recently. I've almost had 1000 new subscribers come up in the last month or so, and I really do appreciate it. It means so much. If you're enjoying this content, please take a moment to smash that like button and subscribe. It really means a lot to me. I feel like I really am hitting my stride, both in my Substack as well as my YouTube. Both are nearing 3,000 subs in both cases, and I'd really like to hit those numbers in the next few weeks. And again, thank you guys so much. And now let's get back to the video. I've generally seen this role exist more at companies like startups, as well as some maybe not tech focused companies where they don't necessarily have all the data infrastructure in place. What I've noticed with a lot of big tech companies is they've developed a lot of the data infrastructure already. And so often their data engineers can focus more purely on just data pipelines and maybe the occasional data infrastructure component. Whereas non-tech companies don't always have the same engineering staff. And in turn, this will force their data engineers to almost play a dual role where they do have to dabble a little bit in software engineering just in order to develop their data pipelines so they can have all the correct infrastructure in place so that their data pipelines run smoothly. Another difference I have noticed is how data engineers and software engineers solve problems. In particular, where we often put our logic tends to be different. I've generally noticed that software engineers put a lot of their logic in their actual applications, right? Like that's generally where they try to center all of their logic, which makes sense, trying to have one place where all your logic exists. So that way, you know, as you go down the stream, you're not having to add extra layers of logic and then in turn add complexity and future testing in your data pipelines. In comparison, I've seen a lot more data engineers as well as kind of the classic ETL developers slash data architects put a lot more of their logic on the SQL side. So this is generally, I think, because of where we are comfortable with our skill sets. Software engineers being more familiar with programming in comparison to data engineers who are generally more skilled, I think, on the data and SQL side. I think that this often changes where we put our logic. As an example, a common thing that needs to happen in terms of data engineering is we often need to map different categories, especially when we get similar categories from different companies. For example, I've worked at companies where you often get 
the same type of data sets from maybe 30 or 40 different data providers, and you need to map them all so they're similar enough so that you can create reports on them. This could be something like, you know, a store naming or category or something like that, and you need to map them. So I'm gonna put up a picture here for an example, where you're trying to do some sort of mapping. You've got some data coming from maybe company A and company B, where you've got various categories, but you need to map them to a single category so that you have the same naming conventions in the end for your final report. Generally speaking, I've seen data engineers do this through tables and SQL, whereas in comparison, I've seen software engineers do this through some form of coding like Java or Python. And so this is just a slight difference on where people like to put their logic. And just to be clear, I'm not going to get into the argument of where logic should exist, just because at the end of the day, I've seen the logic put in multiple places. Personally, I do think it is beneficial to try to put the logic as far upstream as possible, just because the further it is upstream, as well as the less amount of times you need to either apply that logic or reapply that logic somewhere else, in the end allows for less errors to happen. Another place that vastly depends on where you work is pay. I say this because most likely if you are a software engineer at a big tech company, you're probably arguably making somewhere in the range of 30 to 40% more than a data engineer at the end of the day. Whereas if you're working maybe at a smaller company or a non-tech company, due to the fact that stock might not play as big of a role in your compensation, the overall compensation may or may not be a little closer. So salary is a little bit harder, I think, to pinpoint just because of how data engineers are treated. And in some cases, they are treated more like software engineers and thus paid more closely to a software engineering salary for that company, whereas it could be different at a big tech company or startup. Another big difference to note between software engineers and data engineers tends to be general skill sets. One of the big things that I generally note is the fact that data engineers tend to be much stronger in SQL just because at the end of the day, they need to spend a lot of their time modeling data, structuring data, and just manipulating data generally through something like SQL. Whereas software engineers don't generally need to know SQL as in depth because their focus generally in terms of SQL is more on the insert, delete, update level of SQL. They're generally not having to write 500 line queries. Honestly, I hope you're not having to write them either because that's terrible, but they're generally not having to put that much effort into their SQL knowledge. Again, looking more at the logic side of things, software engineers tend to put a lot of their logic on the code side, whereas again, data engineers put it on the SQL side, which in turn impacts their SQL abilities. And just overall, data engineers tend to be specialized in data concepts like data warehousing, ETLs, and other similar best practices and methods that we use that is very different than a lot of what software engineers might need or even need to understand. The other hard thing about defining the differences between software engineers and data engineers is just how broad software engineering is in general, right? Am I referring to software engineering as a lot more kind of front-end development or web development? Or am I referring to a lot more of the back-end and infrastructure development? Honestly, I was checking out this blog post on ryanswanstorm.com and just looking at kind of the differences they were trying to put between software engineers, data engineers, and data scientists. And when I was looking at the differences that they had for software engineers and data engineers, I had a few issues in terms of the fact that they had agile methodologies for software engineers, but not data engineers. Even in their picture, they had things like C-sharp being for software engineers, but not for data engineers. All of this seemed a little silly because a lot of people might have to write in things like C-sharp, especially if you're working in SSIS or some sort of Microsoft shop where a lot of that is what you're using in terms of coding as a data engineer. But in the end of the day, it all kind of comes down to the point where it really does kind of depend. If we are to look back and now switch to a data engineer that maybe is more on the BI side, what you might notice is these data engineers might be doing a lot more drag and drop coding or using something like Airflow, where a lot of the infrastructure is already developed for you. So often you're really just parameterizing a lot of your pipelines and tasks that you need to run, like SQL. So you might just be writing some SQL and then kind of shoving it into Airflow and telling it when to run and not having to do too much in terms of programming. And instead, spend a lot more of your time focused on data modeling, as well as maybe some BI work like data visualization. And this is where you start leaning away from maybe the more software engineering side of things to more of a classic BI uh, ETL developer notion or idea. Again, it is a really wide spectrum of skills that even data engineers have and why it's really hard to define kind of what a data engineer is. And this is why in my three minute video about what is a data engineer, I kind of focus on the fact that data engineers really focus on moving data from point A to point B and don't discuss too much about the how because really it varies so widely with tools like Fivetran and other kind of automated tools that are coming out. A lot of the heavy coding that data engineers have been doing for a long time is kind of going to the wayside.
And if you look back 10 years or so, you'll notice that a lot more of the work that data engineers were doing was even more code heavy when Hadoop and some of these early big data tools started coming out, which required a lot more programming knowledge. Whereas nowadays we have developed a lot of abstraction layers where you may not have to be working with Hadoop at the Hadoop level. You might be able to use it at a, like a Presto level or some other tooling which at the end of the day is generally a good move because then you can spend less time coding and more time just writing SQL to quickly move your data, saving a lot of time in terms of like maintenance as well as just code development. So at the end of the day, it really is a wide spectrum in terms of the role a data engineer plays at a company. In some cases, they really might play more of a software engineer focused on data and data infrastructure. And in other places, they really might play more of a role of a BI developer who has some focus on moving data from point A to point B using something like SSIS or some other similar tooling where it's drag and drop. And in turn, they might also use something like Tableau for data visualization and not have to code that much at all. Personally, the biggest differentiation factor that I would say exists is what we focus on, which is again, kind of obvious. It's the data. It's the concepts like data warehousing, ETLs, ELTs, data lakes, and all these other kind of specializations in data engineering. And again, if you have some examples of what you think the differences between a software engineer and a data engineer are, especially from like personal experience working on the job and kind of what you've seen the differences are, please leave a comment below because at the end of the day, the goal of this video is to help other people in the future kind of understand maybe what career they would like to go into, software engineering or data engineering. And so this is just one perspective of what I've seen, and I'm sure there are plenty of other ones out there that can really add to this discussion, and we can really see what is the difference and what have you guys seen out there being professional, data engineers, software engineers, data scientists, and so forth. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate your time. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.